So welcome to another Digital IRQ tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about using set color and add color in Final Cut Pro 10. A new feature to Final Cut is the ability to click in the window for plugins. So in the past, in Final Cut Pro 7, plugins were not able to have a parameter that clicked on the preview window or the canvas window. And with Final Cut Pro 10, we can do that. And Beautybox takes advantage of that with the mode pop-up and with the set color and add color. Now, these are super useful if you want to either enhance the automatic mask or you have a piece of footage that you need to create a mask manually for. They're very important for that. So let's go ahead and take a look at how they work. So the first thing to do is have Beautybox applied to your footage. And in this case, we're going to create a mask purely from scratch. So we're going to start off with set color. And what set color does is determines the initial color point. And then we're going to use add color to expand the color range to include all the skin tones that we want to mask out. And so we can either just start off with set color and click on, say, a mid-tone part of the image. We're going to click on our nose right here. And you can see that the dark and the light color are going to change here in a second. And it did just that. Now, one thing that I'm going to be upfront and honest about is that this is a new feature for Final Cut Pro 10. Uh, it didn't even work until 10.0.4. And so the whole thing is a little bit buggy. It works really well, but you're, you may have to click a few times for the color chips to pick up the color that you're clicking on. If we take a look at our mask, which we can also click on, so now that we've set our color, you can see what the initial mask looks like, and we're going to expand the skin tone ranges and include other parts of the image. And we're going to click on Add Color to do that. Change Mode to Add Color. And one of the other bugs that you might run into is that at some point, Beautybox stops updating, so you stop seeing changes to the mask. And the fix for that is just to scoot forward one frame and Final Cut will re-render everything, and it'll look like it should. But if you're clicking on the image and you're not seeing any change at all, that's probably what's happening. So I have Add Color selected, and I'm going to start clicking on the image. And we should start seeing changes almost immediately. And so with just a couple clicks of Add Color, I've expanded the skin tone range. We now have a really nice mask. And those skin tones are going to be tracked throughout the entire piece of footage. So once you have it set up on one frame, you are good to go for the rest of the footage. So if we move around, we can see that regardless of what she's doing, whether she's moving her head, and we can move this around a little bit, whether she's moving around, whether she's laughing, whether she's just staring at the camera, all these skin tones are now tracked throughout the entire piece of footage, and all we needed to do was set that mask up on that one frame. And so that's basically all I wanted to go over. Uh, the mode pop-up is a really critical thing if you want to either manually create a mask or enhance the mask that Analyze Frame gives you, the automatic masking. And if you want to enhance the mask, again, you're going to use this Add Color selection, this Add Color tool, and just click on the areas that you want to add to the mask. And you do want to be careful about it because you don't want to go too far. So again, I've got Add Color still selected. You'll notice that if I turn off Show Mask, the dark areas here correspond to the dark skin, skin areas, the areas that are in shadow. And you're not really seeing much detail there anyways. 
And the problem with including that in your mask is that when you select dark areas, it's going to expand the mask to include dark areas everywhere in the image. So you'll see that if I look at my mask again, if I click on these areas, and so, like I said, this is one of those bugs that we ran into. You can see that the dark color has changed, but the mask has not updated. And that's a really good way to notice when this bug is happening. Um, when the color chips change and you don't see any change on the mask. So, what you need to do is come back down to your timeline and scoot forward one frame. And that will update the preview window and show us what our mask really looks like now. And as you can see, that by clicking on those darker areas, we turn off the mask, by clicking on these shadowed areas, we've really expanded the skin tone range way too far. And so you need to undo that and go back to the original that you had. Or you can go and ahead and reset the whole thing and you analyze frame to get your automatic mask see what that looks like and then use add color to make a couple quick adjustments and once again we have a great mask so that's all there is to it I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial we have lots more where this came from on digitalanarchy.com along with free trials and other resources. So please check it all out and see you in the next tutorial.